Uh, thank you, President. Uh, I have to contradict uh, Manfred Weber for once. Uh, he said uh, that there, were, uh, there is at least one positive uh, outcome of the British election, Manfred, the disappearance of UKIP. Uh, <laughs> uh, and, uh, and of those, and of those who, yeah, who want uh, not only Britain out of Europe, who want to destroy uh, the European Union. Uh, from, uh, from inside. But it's true, I think next week in the European Council there will be a lot of items on the agenda, but the main point of the agenda is can we now start uh, the negotiations on the Brexit? We are three years after the start of the debate. We are one year after the outcome of the British referendum. We are, I think, three months, yeah? Three months after the triggering uh, of the uh, notification. And we are still not in uh, a possibility, in a position to start negotiations because there is, for the moment, in any way, not a clear position from the new uh, government in, in, in the United Kingdom. If there is already a new government, because every day I read that there is a deal, but then six hours later, there is no deal. And they are still discussing uh, it. But there are five pressing questions that need to be answered on a short-term basis, uh, Mr. Kamal. Maybe you can help uh, the government to, uh, uh, to respond to them. First is, is the British position still the letter of the 29th of March? Uh, or uh, will the new government take more into account the outcome of the elections? That yeah, was a little bit different than the hard talk of the, uh, of the letter of the 29th. And the second question is, uh, will it be the opinion of the Tories? Or will it be the position of the whole nation? Party interest or national interest? Because this is not about the Tories leaving the European Union. This question is about the UK leaving the European Union. And the third question, what with the Good Friday Agreement? What is the proposal that a Good Friday Agreement can be still in place? That no hard border will be created between the Republic at the one hand and Northern Ireland at the other hand? And then the fourth question, will the British government, as we do from the European side, on 100% guarantee the current rights of EU citizens living in Britain, like we are ready and prepared to guarantee the rights, the current rights of the British citizens living on the continent? And finally, is it still, fifth question, is it still the opinion of the UK government to go out of the single market, to go out of the customs union, is really that populistic illusion to limit free movement in Europe more important than, in fact, uh, the prosperity and the fortune of the British workers, the British industry, the British companies and the British economy. Because let's not, let's face the reality, already this Brexit yeah, has a negative impact on everybody in Europe and especially on Britain. The growth, there is zero growth in the first quarter for the moment in Britain. It's three times less than in the last quarter of last year. And that because of what? Because of the uncertainty that has been created. So I think the time is now ripe that uh, we receive from the British side clear answers on these five questions so that these negotiations can start. And I know yesterday Emmanuel Macron, the new French president, spoke about an, an open door. He said, yeah, if uh, Britain is changing his mind, uh, it will find an open door. I, I can say I, I agree, I don't disagree with him, but like in Alice in Wonderland, no, all doors are the same. Huh? It will be a brand new door. A new, brand new door with a new Europe, a Europe without rebates, without complexity, with uh, real power and with unity. That is the door uh, towards uh, Europe. And for me, uh, Jean-Claude, that is the most important now, the reform of our union. That this reform is not bogged down in these Brexit uh, uh, talks. Um, Brexit talks will look more for the moment, uh, if I can tell you that, as the procession of Echternach. You are from Luxembourg, you can explain that maybe to everybody, what the procession of Echternach is, that is two steps forward and one step uh, backward. Uh, it's, uh, that is, uh, that's a typical Echternach. So I'm very grateful to the Commission for the different reflection papers that they have put on the table. 
But the Commission is more than a think tank. I think the moment is now there when we start these Brexit talks to have also legislative proposals on the reform of the European Union, on defence, as you have done, on the economic and monetary union, but not only reflection papers, also legislative proposals. Don't give the space open to the Council. It's not the Council to fill in the space. It's the Commission who have to do it with legislative proposals. We have now a new uh, president in France who is pro-European. We will have German election. That's the moment to go forward. We always say don't waste uh, a good crisis. Well, don't waste also not a good election cycle too. Thank you.